Welcome, public reading of scripture, scripture community. I am here with Amir Tsarfati, Pastor Raz, Pass and place. Pastor Zach. Pastor Zach is the lead pastor of Calvary, Miami, and Pastor Raz is the founding pastor. And by the way, friends, uh, this is a very special edition of PRS, Public Reading of Scripture, because this is the first time we've ever had four people on one camera. And by the way, if you're interested, you can go to this website and you can see these guys in action. Uh, they are regularly preaching, and we had an amazing time with them this morning while Amir preached two services at this church. So feel free to visit them later after this broadcast. We have something even more special than that. We are going to be giving you the complete epistle of 2 Timothy. We're going to read it, all of us, one chapter each. It's going to be just like the first century. Could you imagine when Paul sent this and Timothy had this, this letter and they were able to read it in one sitting? We're going to try to emulate that as leaders here. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Pastor Zach to open us in prayer, and then we will go straight into the Word of God. Pastor Zach. Lord, we thank you so much for this day that you've blessed us with, Lord, and we thank you for the blessing of your word, God. Uh, we pray that it will take deep root within our hearts, Lord. We pray that you'd help our hearts to be that good ground, that good soil, Lord, that as your word goes forth, it would bear much fruit in our lives, God. So may you just be with us, Lord, as we go through 2 Timothy. Lord, may you minister to us, God, and encourage us, Lord, exhort us, convict us, God. And just make us to look more and more like you, Jesus. So we love you. We thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's open up our Bibles to 2 Timothy. We're actually reading from the New King James Version. And I love the fact, I'm seeing Swedish people here. Man, it's late for you guys there. And people Denmark. from all over the world, Denmark, Michigan, and uh, Papua New Guinea. First time I've ever seen that, folks. So 2 T Timothy chapter 1. Let's go. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day. Greed, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel, according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose, and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast to the pattern of sound words, which you've heard from me in faith and in love, which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know, that all those in Asia have turned away from me, among whom are Figelius and Hermogenes, the Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out very zealously and found me. The Lord grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered 
to me at Ephesus. And now Amir is going to read chapter 2. Yes. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, uh, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that, the, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone compete in athletes, competes in athletes, yes, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to uh, uh, must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is faithful saying, for if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we shall reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to, not, uh, uh, to no profit, to the ruin of their hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and uh, Philoteus are of this sort, who have, a trade, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in the great house, there are not only voices, uh, vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love. Preach with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but, the, but, the, but be gentle to all. Um, able to teach patient in humility concerning those who are in opposition if god perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him 
to do his will. Amazing friends, before we move to chapter three, this is very direct, straight truth. And could you imagine if we as pastors and teachers would take the same lead as Paul did and preach with the same conviction and directness, what that could do to transform lives. As the Lord is speaking to all of us right now, and believe me, the Holy Spirit has uh, put a few, few things in my heart. This is what PRS is all about. So without further ado, we're going to go on over to chapter three, Pastor Zach, chapter three. Chapter three. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, Lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, hmm. traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must come in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. May the Spirit of God speak to all of our hearts. Could, this is, it's almost like this was written for us today. And yet the, God knew it. He called it a long ago. Oh, but we're not finished, are we? <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 4, Pastor Roz. Chapter 4, I charge you, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. For I am ready, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure 
is at hand. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world and has departed for Thessalonica, Crescens for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. And Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas. And when you come, the books, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must be aware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me, but may not be charged against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the lion's wow. mouth or out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Prisca and Achilla and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, but Trophimus I have left in Miletus sick. Do your utmost to come to me before winter. Eubulus greets you, as well as Prudence, Linus, Claudia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. 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 You know, one of the traditions we've started here in PRS, and I'll uh, take this down, is Write with the Lord, Spirit of God, if you want to share in the forum what he has shared with you, what you feel he, one thing, just one thing you feel the Spirit of God spoke to you in. I'm going to ask each of you one thing that the Lord God spoke to you in. All I have to say is I do not want to be like Alexander, this uh, <laughs> this coppersmith. I want to be like all the other people that he mentioned by name. Mm. How would you like to have your name mentioned by name in the positive sense of the Bible? I wouldn't want my name mentioned and called out because that's yeah. thousands of years where your name stands negatively. Yeah. Amir, what is one thing God spoke to you? Uh, I could see that deception uh, regarding the, the timeline of prophecy has already started in the first century. Amazing. You can see that they already started teaching that the resurrection happened. Of, of I'm not talking about of Jesus, that, that you're talking about resurrection of those who died in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you can clearly see that confusion and deception mm -hmm was the works of the enemy from day one. And from the moment the gospels and the epistles were written, they were already mm -hmm. used to deceive people, uh -huh. um, obviously by the enemy. So uh, we shouldn't be surprised that there is so much deception 2000 years later when there was already so much confusion and deception in the first century. Amazing. Pastor Zach, because I'm going to ask you to close this in prayer. <laughs> so you get to, Pastor Zach, one thing the Spirit of God spoke to you today. Yeah, in uh, verse 12, chapter 3, it said, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, how God's word, he's, he's honest from the beginning, that if we really want to live a righteous life for Jesus, there is going to be persecution. That if we're finding ourselves with no persecution, no no fighting through the water, no fighting against the world and what's going on. We need to check our lives and say, Lord, am I truly living right before you? Mm. 
Pastor Roz. Uh, I enjoyed here in chapter 4, verse 17 and 18, how Paul said, The Lord stood with me mm -hmm. and strengthened me. And Jesus will never forsake us. And But I see something there that spoke to me. The Lord stood with me. I want to be one of those that also stands with the Lord. Yeah. You know, in the days that we live in, there's going to be a, a falling away. But then the other thing that really struck my heart, and I love that, is the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me to his heavenly kingdom. So I have a joy of uh, knowing Amir for many years, Mike, Zach. Uh, what a joy to be here with you guys. But to think of you uh, that has joined us and how the Lord will stand with you and he will preserve you no matter what you're going through. What a what a privilege! What a what a pleasure today. Amen. I thought it couldn't get better. Well, here we go. It's huh? about to because you're going to close us in prayer right now. So let's all pray. And I love the comments. I see that the Lord is speaking to your hearts as well. What a wonderful community today, Pastor Roz. Can you close us today? Privilege. Mm -hmm. God, thank you. Thank you that here in His love, not so much that we love you, but you love us. You really love us. And thank you for the same way that you've allowed me to meet Amir and Mike and. Uh, be a dad to Zach and have a wonderful son that you love everyone that's gathered here. Lord, thank you that you will stand by us no matter what we go through. And thank you, Lord. Thank you that you will deliver us and you will present us faultless. Mm. What a privilege to be part of Behold Israel Ministry, uh, Calvary Chapel, Miami. But what a privilege to be part of you, Jesus, mm. Joshua. Thank you. Bless everyone that joined us lord and bless amir and the ministry and calvary chapel miami lord in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. we are going to close there but just to remind you if those of you who have just come in we're at calvary chapel miami if you want a church that speaks forth the word of god unashamed unbridled straight uh, you might want to try that church out it's a great place and so with that, we are going to say we love you, PRS community. It's an honor to have these readings once a week. And so we're going to say bye at this time. Bye-bye for now. And until next week, PRS, Mike Goulet signing out.